Hello dear viewers and listeners. This video is about light dependent phase of photosynthesis. And you know in my previous class I explained how photosynthesis and respiration these two process is linked and what is the discussed issue in this chapter actually in bioenergetics. You know already that I am explaining this chapter based on uh, SSC levels and O level students and based on the books that are written because uh, photosynthesis is a very long and, and numbers of biochemical reactions are there so till which level I should explain I already explained in my previous class that I will definitely talk to that level and when you go to A level or even more higher level then you will understand that you know, how much study inside of these things so based on this light dependent phase you should know that in 1905 British physiologist uh, Blackman uh, divided this photosynthesis into two different phases that is light dependent phase so we saw that uh, photosynthesis photosynthesis is getting two different types uh, two states which is light dependent phase and light independent phase in both cases I mean one process as photosynthesis is a long and continuous biochemical process it has two states not types two states that is light dependent phase and light independent phase so what is going on in light dependent phase this video is about that so first you need to understand that that in green leaf in green leaf if we say that this is this is the cuticle of the leaf cuticle of the leaf if you see the transverse x sections of leaf then we have idea this is the, actually the cuticle and inside there are this mesophilic tissues and these mesophilic tissues is called palisade parenchyma so this is actually the palisade parenchyma and then there are some this sort of like spongy parenchyma and there will be a xylem tissue and this xylem tissue will be responsible to uh, to to conduct the water and to uh, okay so this is actually the spongy vesicle so there there should be a very smaller holes which is called stomata so in this stomata there there are some small pores in the uh, the lower levels of the leaf which will be responsible for taking carbon dioxide and also the process of transpiration and you know the process of transpiration is the eliminations of water through the vapor and also the stomata is responsible to take carbon dioxide from the environment so this is actually the palisade parenchyma and this is spongy parenchyma and these holes is known as stomata okay so in this palisade parenchyma there are numbers of numbers of chlorophyll molecules is distributed and these chlorophylls plays the vital role to to absorb the sunlight and then transfer this solar energy to the chemical energy and that is why this chlorophyll is important because this is the study about chapter 4 and I hope you already studied about plastid and chlorophyll in previous chapter that how the plastic, the structure of plastic, the structure of chloroplast and of course you know about chlorophyll molecules. So these chlorophyll molecules plays a vital role to, to absorb the solar energy and then some series of biochemical reactions to convert it into the chemical energy. So this stomata is responsible to absorb carbon dioxide from the environment. So in my previous class I already explained that that the photosynthesis is actually carbon dioxide and water carbon dioxide and water will be produced will be produced 
glucose C6, H2LO6 and then it will definitely produce oxygen and then water. And of course we need to balance in both cases. It will be 6 molecule of carbon dioxide, 12 molecule of water, 6 molecule of oxygen, 6 molecule of water. And of course there is presence of sunlight, sunlight and main thing is chlorophyll. So I already wrote that essentially both components of photosynthesis are forced by this is chlorophyll, light, water and carbon dioxide. These four essential components is required in photosynthesis. So you see that in light dependent phase, sunlight is essential, sunlight is mandatory and then this sunlight when light rays is falling down to the leaf I mean then then chlorophyll molecules absorb that energy and in that levels the energy radiations we know that there will be like 680 nanometer to 700 nanometer wavelengths that rays will be absorbed by chlorophyll and then chlorophyll will work on producing ATP and NADPH2 how it will happen so you know that this is palisade parenchyma and this is spongy parenchyma and in the lower levels there will be stomata through the stomata carbon dioxide will be entered and then water and carbon dioxide will be reacting on this molecule chlorophyll and all this process would be in green leaf into these mesophyll tissues so this mesophyll tissues is the place where this photosynthesis is going on. So you understand this is glucose and this is oxygen that is required for us to breathe and this water is also required for the environment. Now we need to understand what is going on into this light dependent phase. Suppose this is a leaf, okay? I'm just, I'm just giving you this idea of what's going on. And here this is sunlight so when sunlight sun rays fallen down to the leaf it absorb the photon photon energy so this photon energy will be absorbed by the chlorophyll molecules and then in chlorophyll and in water I mean in leaf there will be water and through this photon energy water will be dissociate and it will produce protons, electrons and oxygen. So this oxygen will be going out through this process and then we, th this is required for us to breathe because animal kingdom they require oxygen for breathing and this oxygen is also producing through this process photosynthesis. So in chlorophyll molecule, in chlorophyll molecule, through the process of light, water and carbon dioxide is joined together to produce this glucose. So what's going on in light dependent phase? As I said earlier, in light dependent phase, sunlight is essential. And when sun rays fall down to the leaf, it absorbs the photon energy. And on that level, the photon energy will dissociate water to proton, electron and oxygen and this dissociation of water with the sunlight is called photolysis this is very important term you must remember in this case photo photolysis so the photolysis is the breakdown of water with the help of sunlight it's called photolysis. So when photolysis will happen, then we'll go proton, electron, and oxygen. And when this electron is producing, there are some number of explanations inside that then ATP will be produced. How ATP will be produced? When ADP, ADP, adenosine diphosphate will react with another inorganic phosphate which is actually H3PO4 
then it will be producing ATP and water and this production of ATP requires numbers of electron carrier into the system and this system is called photosystem I will explain it later on in uh, A-level biology or HSC biology you must know that this electron will be carried out with the photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 and through this process photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 it will be producing ATP this ATP will be producing through the photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 you might have a question that how this photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 I mean how from where it's coming like and that is why I am requesting you to have a, another class to explain it how photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 is going on it's two types actually cyclic photophosphorylation and non-cyclic photophosphorylation in my previous class I already explained what is photophosphorylation as you know that in these reactions one molecule of phosphate is adding with adenosine diphosphate and it's producing ATP that is triphosphate so it means one phosphate is added with ADP and these additions of phosphate with any compounds is called phosphorylation and if this process is going on under sunlight or uh, sunlight is required then it's called photophosphorylation and basically this photophosphorylation has two different categories number one cyclic photophosphorylation and non-cyclic photophosphorylation it requires next level class I will explain but in this class you just remember that for system 1 and 2 they produce ATP and also this proton will add with N A D P H and then it will be N A D P H plus H plus which is actually reduced N A D P and that is why this N A D P H2 and A D P is the main production of light dependent phase and that is why the production of NADPH2 and ATP requires sunlight and that is why as sunlight is required as photon is required that is why these steps of this process is called light dependent phase that has been invented by British physiologist Blackman in 1905 so you must remember the name which is actually black man in 1905 so you know the ADP and phosphate is adding and it's called photophosphorylation you also need to understand this term photophosphorylation though it's a long word but it easy photo means light and phosphorylation means adding phosphate with any compounds and this photophosphorylation is two types this is cyclic and second one is non-cyclic though these two different steps is being discussed in HSC level biology I shall explain and you see that in HSC level botany there is a chapter it's called photosynthesis and this is huge I'm just giving you a tip of the iceberg it's not actually tip of the iceberg like 0.0001% of the whole process with this lecture so right now those students are writing an English version and studying chapter 4 of SSC biology you think simply that in light dependent phase only sunlight is required and in leaf water will be dissociated and it will be producing electrons protons and oxygen oxygen will be carried out through the stomata for the breathing of entire living kingdom and these electrons will be responsible to carry it out from one electron carrier to another electron carrier I can remember the name like ferridoxine, plastoquinone, plastocyanin, cytochrome so these are the names of electron carrier that we'll be using here for phosphorylation that is the next level class you just remember one thing that PS1 is photosystem 1 
and PS2 is photosystem 2. These two process will produce ATP and NADPH2 and these stored energy will be stored in ATP and the production of light dependent phases ATP and and NADPH2 these two all together they are said like assimilatory power this is very important so assimilatory power just remember one thing assimilatory power is actually the ATP and NADPH2 which is the production of light dependent phase so this is a short description about light dependent phase I hope you can understand well and when you read the process please try to understand what's going on and what is this chronology of the uh, the process so these four things is required for photosynthesis this is the reaction we need sunlight and chlorophyll we need to understand the structure of leaf so when you understand the leaf you see some pictures of your books and something like that so you know that in this picture green leaf has been divided into very zoom in uh, way and then chlorophyll has been discussed so you just try to understand what are the points of these uh, different structures so that you can understand well that what is the issues so you need to remember some terms in light dependent phases photophosphorylation cyclic and non cyclic uh, phyto uh, 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 photolysis lysis means breakdown and as uh, sunlight is required then this is called photolysis so photolysis and photorespirations photo uh, phosphorylations and these words is important and also you need to know that ATP and NADPH2 both they are called assimilatory power as they will be used in next level I mean this is light dependent phase and next is light independent phase on that class you know that how this ATP and NADPH2 is, will be used as it will be used that is why it's called assimilatory power so this is a short description about light dependent phase and I hope you understand you enjoy the class if you don't enjoy please do let me know and if you understand my lecture well please also do let me know because your appreciation self your feedback is essential for me so take care and I'm coming with the next lecture with light independent phase and then after I shall explain about respirations and of course you know a very complex process respiration is coming on which is about glycolysis, acetyl CoA formation, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. So see you, take care, stay well, bye.